In this video, we'll make this very simple 3D part and we'll make it using minimum number of planes. Actually, we'll just use two planes for making this simple 3D part. So, let's get started. Now, as always, I'll start with a simple plane so I'll just go to this uh, create panel and here I'll select this create a sketch option and we'll select any of these planes so in this case I'll select this right plane although you can select any other plane if you want to and now let's start with a few circles or you can even start with lines if you want to in this case I think making lines would make more sense so I'll just start with lines instead of circle and I'll click on this origin and I'll make my very first line here so about this big alright now let's make a few circles so I'll just go to this point and I'll make the first one and the second circle alright and we need to add few more of these so let's add a circle here and another one right over here okay so we have added a few now before we add other circles here let's just constrain these existing ones so I'll just type D for dimension and here I'll just add the dimensional constraint so the very first dimensional constraint that uh, I'll add here is this length so the length of this line is going to be 172 units so I'll just click here and I'll double click on this and I'll make it 172 now that's big so let's just zoom out a bit okay now we'll go to the dimensional constraint again so D this point then this point and this vertical distance is 75 so let's type in 75 and enter now we'll add one horizontal distance so D again but this time I'll add the distance from this point to this point and I'll add the horizontal one so this distance is 110 okay now we need to make sure that this circle is exactly tangent here but before I make them tangent I'll add their radii so I'll just type D again and I'll click here and the diameter for the circle is 115 so let's type that value 115 then D again and this circle and its diameter is 75 so I'll double click and I'll make it 75 there we have it okay now we can make them tangent so I'll select this circle and then I'll select this one just by pressing my control key and I'll click on this tangent constraint and now it's tangent now the height of this circle is also 172 which is exactly equal to the length of this line so let's add that so D from this point to this in the vertical direction this should be 172 there we have it so that's what we needed and we have it now now in this case also we need to add the diameter so let's add that so I'll type D and the diameter of this circle is 45 so I'll just type in 45 and enter now D again this one well let's make it 75 actually one is bigger another is smaller and here we have it so that's 75 and 45 now we need two lines which are tangent here and here so for that I'll go to line and now I'll just start from here randomly and I'm gonna just make it tangent right here so now this is tangent this is not but we need to just make sure that this line is also tangent so in order to just make it tangent I'll first delete this coincident constraint although we could have just made this thing without the constraint but since we have already added that I'll right click on it and I'll delete it now we can move this line freely wherever we want and we can just now constrain it let's make it a bit bigger I'll select this one then this circle and I'll make it tangent so we have this extra length we will trim it but before that let's make another one another line from this point and this should be tangent right here okay that's done let's trim it so trim let's trim this extra part okay and that's also done now as you can see this still has some degree of freedom eh? and that's because of the coincident constraint so this apparently is not coincident on this origin so we need to just make sure that this is exactly coincident here and that's probably because of this line which we have this extra line for some reason we have it so in order to just make it completely coincident I'm just going to delete this line 
and now I'll click on this point and this point and I'll just make them coincident and now this part of the drawing is fully constrained okay now let's move to the next part of the drawing and for that I'll go to line and I'll just click here then I'll just eyeball my drawing and I'll just make it somewhat like uh, this here it goes and here and here and I'll just make it like this okay there we have it now we'll constrain it so for that I'll just select this one and then this circle and I'll just make it tangent okay also I'll make sure that this length is extra so that we can trim it in a clean way so I'll just go to trim and oops let's go to trim and just trim it now I'll type D and I'll click here and here and this distance is 30 let's type in that value now I'll type D again and this distance is also 30 so let's just add that so double click let's make it 30 now this tiny gap is 6 unit so I'll type D from this point to this this distance is 6 so I'll double click and I'll make it 6 and finally the distance from this line to this is 57.5 so let's type D zoom in a bit and from this point to this point I'll just make it 57.5 so 57.5 and there we have it okay now as you can see our drawing is almost constrained except this part so this is still free to move because we don't have any kind of dimension connecting it to any other part of the drawing so we just need to add that finally and to do that we'll just add one more dimensional constraint so I'll type D and I'll just click here and then here and this distance is 96.5 so let's make it 96.5 and now it's fully constrained here as well okay so we've made almost everything right here on this plane and this was the only thing required on this plane and using this sketch we can now make the 3d part so let's now finish the sketch and here we have it now I'll go to this extrude tool and here I'm going to extrude all of these profiles separately so as you can see as I move my cursor they're kind of like highlighted and we can then select them separately also if you'll notice uh, the motion of mouse in this case or the motion of this part completely is very fluidic now this is just because of 3d connection space mouse when you use this mouse it's like moving the part right with your hand so you have complete freedom over how you want to move this part and you can just move it around in your drawing area and you are not limited by any of the constraints which are inbuilt into Fusion 360 so in this case I'm using a combination of 3d connection CAD mouse as well as 3d connection space mouse so this is one of the best combinations for using with any CAD software including Fusion 360 and if you want to know more about this just check the link in the description now moving on with this I'll select this profile that's the first one which I'm going to select and I'll just move it out but this is not the only side where I want to move it I want to move it in both the directions so in the direction I'll select two sides you can also select symmetric so in this case symmetric will make more sense as we will be moving it equally in both the directions so there we have it now the entire distance or this entire length is 120 so here the measurement shows half of that which will be 60 so we can just use this either half of the di distance or we can also add the whole length so let's just add whole length because we know that value although we can directly use 60 as well but so let's just type 120 here and now I'll click OK now as soon as I made this part the complete sketch simply disappeared but that's still available in our drawing and we can go to this sketch folder expand it and activate this sketch again now rest of the sketch is visible so let's go to extrude again and this time I'll select this part okay now once again direction symmetric and this entire distance is 110 so let's just type in that value but before that I'll click on whole length and 110 and okay now 
we'll just repeat it for other parts. I'll go to extrude. Now this section and symmetric. Once again, whole length will make more sense. So I'll use that. Then this is 26. And OK. Now before I hit OK, I want to highlight this option here. Now in the operation join is selected and this is what I'll be selecting for all of these sections. So basically when you select join it will join this new part with the existing ones. So you will end up with a single solid body and all of these parts all of these sections will be joined with the existing ones and they'll just result into a single body. So instead of multiple bodies you can just select join to make a single body. Though if you want to create separate bodies for all of these sections you can click this drop down and select new body and you can also perform other operations which we will not be doing here so in this case I'll select join and I'll simply click on ok and there we have it so another section finally we need this one as well so here also symmetric now whole length and this whole length is 50 so let's just type in the value 50 and ok ok so we are done this is our part now Obviously, we are not done completely. I mean, this is just only one of the planes worked on on this front plane. Now, we just need to add 2D sketch for another plane. Let's do that. For that, you can make a new plane or you can use existing sketch as a reference. It's completely up to you. So since I've already made a sketch, I will use this plane. But using this plane will actually depend on your design intent. So you need to make sure that you select appropriate plane. In this case, selecting this plane is sufficient for this example. So I'm just going to select create a sketch and I'll just select this plane, this bottom plane. Okay, now here we have it. Now before I add anything here, let me just move it around just to see where I have it. Okay, there it is. So this is where I'm making my drawing. Now I'll click on this bottom again so that I have this thing in clear view and we can start making our drawing. Oops. So here it is. Now I'll go to create and in this case I'll select slot and center to center slot. This is what I'm going to use. So now I'll click here and here and here. That's our center to center slot. Now we can just constrain it. So I'll just type D and this length is 120. So I'll double click and I'll make it 120. Okay. Now diameter and this is well, as we have radius, so let's just type 36. Radius is 36 here, so 36. Now we also have two circles inside this, so I'll just make these two circles. So I'll just click here and I'll make one here and I'll just add another one as well. Then I'll add the constraints. So this one is a dia of 25, so 25, enter, and again D, and this also has a dia of 25, so 25 and enter. So we've got this. Now, this drawing is not constrained. You can see that this is, well, free to move in our plane. So we just need to ensure that this is constrained and for that I'll click on this line and then I'm gonna click on this origin and here I'll just make a center line here. So I'll just select this line. Now I'll click on this line and I'll convert it into a construction geometry. So I'll click on it and you can click here on the construction option. Also you can just type the X key and it will convert it into a construction geometry. Now that's done. Okay, the next thing is, well, this line and this line. I'm just going to control select this. Okay, here we have it. Now, I'll make sure midpoint is selected here. Now, this object will be exactly aligned along this line with respect to its midpoint. So this midpoint will always remain on this line. But still it has freedom to move along this line that we should restrict now. And for that I'll use a dimensional constraint. So I'll type D and I'll click on this line. Then I'll click on this one. And this distance is exactly equal to 36 which is the radius of this circle. So I'll type 36 and there we have it. Now this is fully constrained sketch and we can just use it to make our drawing. But before we actually do that, we need to make another concentric circle right over this one. So I'll just go to circle again and I'll click here and this time, well, I'll just make another set of concentric circles, then D and this diameter is 60. So I'll just type in 60, there we have it. And again, D, enter and this one has a diameter of again 60, there we have it. Finish the sketch and 
let's orbit the drawing. So as you can see again, well, here we have it. Now we will once again just move these parts separately one by one. So we have a lot of these sections, we'll just move them separately. Just like our previous example and I'll just go to extrude and the very first thing that I'm gonna do here is this. I'll select this part of the drawing and I'll extrude it in this direction and I'll only extrude it up to this plane. So in this case I'll just click here on this plane and automatically it will just use that distance which is minus 30 because it's moving in the opposite direction so minus 30 and there we have it that's extruded now click OK and but before that just make sure you have selected join here and here we have it so once again we don't have that sketch so click here to make that visible and repeat it so I'll go to extrude this section as well as this section we can select multiple sections as well move it up and this time we'll add the distance and this distance is minus 36 why minus because as I moved up look at this the distance is indicated in negative sign that's because we are moving it in opposite direction so this should be minus 36 and enter and there we have it now it's time to clean up the drawing and actually we can just clean it up simply by hiding the sketches so I'll click on this sketch folder just to hide all the sketches and that's our final sketch now if you want to add just a few details which are a few fillets here just to add some relief for the stress so if you don't want stress concentration obviously you would want this part to have fillets here and for that you can just go to fillet and add a few fillets so in this case I'll just add a fillet of radius 5 here and another one here and as you can see it's really intuitive moving this part around using the space mouse and it's quite a breeze working with this so I've got these three edges selected and now I'm gonna just type 5 here in edge radius and there we have it that's applied everywhere I'll simply click OK with the default options and that's my final part in Fusion 360 and I've made it using only two planes so I hope you like this video if you have questions Feel free to let me know in the comments area and I'll see you soon in another video.